what is going on you guys i wanted to come to you today with like a shorter video trying to you know talk about some of the highlights and summarize some of the stuff that was kind of revealed for the conversion kit unboxing today in uh, ffg's live stream on twitch if you've already uh watched the live stream whether on twitch or right here with me um then you've probably already seen all of this stuff you're probably already aware of it uh, I'm not going to be able to cover all of that in a short video because it was just a lot of stuff. So if you want the whole thing, go back and watch my live stream coverage. We kind of had the whole thing right there. Um, or you can watch the FFG's full stream on Twitch. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's all there. Uh, it's also being talked about on the forums right now. But I figured I'd just do like bring you a quick highlights. Um, there's a couple of interesting things that they, before we get into all the, you know, the cards and some of the upgrades and some of the ships, I'm not going to talk about every single ship because some really weren't changed all that much. But there's a couple of interesting things. They confirmed that range zero is touching. I, a lot of people had thought that was the case. Um, that was confirmed. Um, the, like the force rating, that's, that's the new stat that some of these ships are getting. That's the cap. That's not how many force you regenerate each turn. They talked about that. Um, they, they, they talked about that there's, you know, some of the, in some of the new pilots that are coming, there's going to be more pilots in 2.0 than there were in 1.0. So you're gonna, actually going to get more variety as far as the number of pilots for each ship that you're going to have. So not necessarily every ship is going to have more, but overall there's going to be more in 2.0. So that's cool. Um, and it's nice to see like your, how much stuff you're getting. Those are big boxes too with a lot of stuff in them. Um, so um, one of the things, like some of the really, really powerful stuff has been nerfed and toned down, but not necessarily in ways that just make it crap, but some in some ways that make it um, more interesting. So Sabine is the first one we're talking about here. You know, so she's going to get, you know, four different tokens. And when a bomb goes off, instead of just always being infinite and doing a damage, um, they, you know, she's going to be able to pick one of these four and put those on that ship. So that's kind of cool. And that's kind of one of the themes you saw here. A lot of the infinite stuff or infinite regen has really been toned down so that things, so games won't go on forever. There won't be as much infinite stuff. Um, B wings are getting some help. So, uh, so you're, you're seeing if you haven't already seen, you have this whole linked action thing. So, like their top action is a focus into a barrel roll. It's a red barrel roll, so that means it will stress you. Uh, so that's cool. I asked in the Twitch a number of times, and I haven't you know had it confirmed like the actual ruling of whether a linked action counts as only one action or it counts as two actions for the purposes of how it would interact with a free action. Like somebody says, you can do a free action. Can you do you know, I, a, a linked action as a free action, you know, so things like that, I think, you know, it, maybe it will, maybe, maybe I missed it, but so I still have some more questions. They didn't answer every question, uh, but they, you know, they changed the B-Wing, um, less shields, more hull, so that crits are a little bit more relevant. Um, I understand that, uh, but, you know, change the dial up a little bit. You got a one Talon roll on the B-Wing right now, so that's pretty cool also. Um, so a little bit more maneuverability. Um, you know, some changes to the dial. They showed a lot of the dials. So uh, I think they showed all the dials. Um, so that's cool. Um, I, didn't, I didn't grab a screenshot of A-Wings. A-Wings had some fixes too. Uh, so that's cool. More actions. Um, you know, good stuff. Uh, we, we got some cool, you know, docking is important. So we're going to take a look at some of the ghost stuff. Um, and, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I grabbed an AP5 screenshot here because... Um, I like that. Like first off, it's showing it's got this front two for the attack. You got you know two out of the front, two out of the back. So ships that have the auxiliary firing arc don't necessarily have to shoot exactly the same out of their front or out of their back. So that's cool. But AP5 is a droid. So when you have droid pilots, he doesn't have focus. If you'll notice, AP5 doesn't have the ability to focus. He has calculate um, over in his action bar. So so that's cool. Whereas the human pilots will end up having focus. So that's. So that much is cool, and he um, he's going to be able to dock. Docking is going to work in that you can dock mid-game. You don't have to start the game docked. You can dock and undock, uh, and, and so that is cool. Um, here we've got the ghost. Um, the ghost is getting reinforced, and, and they're changing reinforce also so that it's not like this um, like this permanent, oh, you can't hit me for your little, your little one ping. Reinforce is going to have basically reduced damage to a minimum of one. So if somebody hits you for one, it's still going to go through. So that may, helps those smaller attacks still matter. So TIE Fighters, while they're still only like, you know, going to roll two dice, they have actually still a better chance of getting one through. Um, and they've kind of streamlined the way that uh, docking is going to work and the, the keywords here. 
So um, you still have four primary attack out the front, but why should you have the same four primary attack out the rear? So what they're doing is they're giving you your docked ship's attack out the rear. So if you have the new sheathapede, you're probably only going to shoot two out the rear. If you have the attack shuttle, you shoot three out the rear. If they come up with something else that you can potentially dock, you'll get its attack out the rear as well. E-wings. E-wings are getting a fix. Uh, this is a big one. Look at that dial. The dial is all over the place. Um, they're getting three uh, S loops, Signor's loops, so that's kind of cool. Um, Corrin Horn still has pretty much the same ability, uh, but you have to be in his bullseye arc for him to do it. Uh, and they, they clean up the wording. It's initiative zero uh, at the end, so like instead of at the end, he's, he's sh shooting at it as if he were pilot skill zero or initiative zero. Um, uh, but, but also... Um, and the E-wings have experiment, so you see underneath his ability, you have experimental scanners, uh, you know, and, and this is this is how they're incorporating like fixes, pile uh, buffs or whatever, um, to to these to these ships, and that it's like some kind of title or modification built in already. They also have one extra hull. If you notice, they're like three 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 now instead of three three two three, so that much is good. And then of course you've got the uh, boost and barrel roll in uh, into target lock, so that is cool. Uh, another thing that's interesting to me that I wonder about interactions with stuff is that, you know, you can't take the same action twice, but let's say, for example, you target lock, and then you get a free action later on, um, and, they, and you want to boost into target lock. Since it's red target lock versus your white target lock, is that still considered the same action since it's, there is technically, you know, it, it, there could be perceived that those are two different actions because one's printed in one spot, one's printed in another spot, and they're different colors. Interesting stuff. I don't know how all of those rulings are going to come out, but these are some of the questions that arise for me. Um, Han Solo got a big buff. Now, first thing I want to point out is that if you have, are not already familiar, the highest pilot skill or initiative is what they're calling it now is six, right next to Han Solo. So that's not bad. That's and it's and apparently that's going to be very very rare. Um, if you notice, Corrin Horn is only a five. Um, some of the other really good pilots are only fives as well, but Han Solo is six. There's going to be very very few sixes, and um, and, and, and you know, just to make each one more meaningful, each number more meaningful. Um, now, first off, Han does the Falcons do have a red boost, so that is um, you know, if you want a boost, it's going to cost you stress. Engine upgrade now is require only can go on ships that have a red boost, and it can turn the red boost white. And they showed that, so it's not like a must-have anymore, but uh, but it could be nice, you know. Um, but then if they do a large ship that doesn't have a red boost, then you can't take engine upgrade or doesn't have boost at all, right? Um, but yeah, Han Solo's ability, you can reroll dice twice potentially. But again, a lot of these, a lot of the cool effects that are in this game, and this is a great example of it, are using, um, you know, you have to have somebody in your arc or in your bullseye arc or whatever. So like a lot of the cool abilities that were just on in original X-Wing now only work if you have lined up a shot. So if you completely missed or screwed up, you know, there are more consequences than just, oh, I don't get to shoot. You know, you have to have, you know, you got you got to have things lined up. So, um, so, that, so in, in the case of Han Solo, you have to be flying and be close to an obstacle. So, uh, and this, this also works for defense. So this is just a big buff for Han Solo, making him really nice. I, I just, I totally like, like this new Han Solo. Let's talk about the YT-2400. Four primary attack, right? So they decided, you know, um, that they kind of wanted to take the best of both worlds. What was everybody doing with the 2400? They were giving it, you know, uh, they were using an Outrider title. So um, now, you know, you have this, you have this, you know, range, you know, power four weapon. And, you know, it's still maneuverable. It's still got a good dial. Um, You've got barrel roll. The barrel roll is red. You don't have boost, so you can't give engine upgrade to this thing. So there you go. So here's any one of those examples. Uh, but you've got the sensor blind spot. So if you're at a, um, if you're doing a primary attack, it's somebody that's zero to one. Uh, you don't get the bonus, and you roll one fewer attack die. So you know, instead of uh, you know, basically it's it's treated like it's a, it was like a two die attack that you do get the bonus for. You know, because you're gonna go down to because you can't roll five attack dice on somebody this way, but that's cool. You know, that, that's cool. I, I it's pretty interesting, pretty interesting. Oh, HWKs. This was a big one. HWKs really got fixed. Um, I I didn't grab one of uh, the dial 
and the HWK, but the dial got fixed a little bit more too. They have a zero stop maneuver now, which is cool. Um, so, 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 so these guys, uh, first off, lots of actions, right? You've got jam built in. Um, they, they have a, a primary weapon turret. Now, there's two different types of turrets um, in this game for, for, you know, that are built in. Well, there's lots of, there's multi, there's a lot of different types of turrets, but um, the main two types that are not upgrades are this one that's a single directional turret, so just one arc, and then let me go back to the Falcon, or, or like the 2400 here, and the Falcon has this too, and this is meant to represent ships that have multiple turrets, and that you're, you're fighting this way, so, you know, whichever, you know, you have front and back, or left and right, so this one is, you know, covering more ground, this one's a little harder, you're only covering one angle, um, but at least his primary weapon value of two now. So they've always said they wanted to fix that and it was always a mistake. Jan's ability is about the same. But you got a lot more a a options for action. So you can focus and then move your turret. Target lock and then move your turret. You can boost. You can just move, just straight up move your turret. And you can jam. So you can do a whole lot more support st style stuff um, without having to equip some kind of special turret upgrade also. Um, but you do have to... You, get, you want to fly because you got to you know you got to line up Jan and be pointing at the enemy in order to use her ability. Now let's look at some of the Imperial stuff. There is definitely some cool Imperial stuff here as well. So let's talk about um, first off, Deathfire is a cool ability. They led with this one, and I thought it was really fun. And basically, if you get destroyed, you still get to shoot and then drop a bomb or something like that. So um, I, I like the uh, idea of firing back from the grave. So that much is fun, but bombers, uh, you know, bombers all have this nimble bomber. That means that they're better at bombing, and I like that bombers are, you know, now you want to put bombs on bombers instead of just saying, well, there's better ships than bombers to put bombs on, because bombs, uh, you know, you may use a different template, so you have a lot more flexibility on where you want to bomb, and it's not a you have to, it's a you may, so that's really nice. So you can, you know, you get some flexibility on where you want to place the bombs as well. So not only are, you know, we have some cool new pilot abilities, but we also have uh, this nimble bomber that's baked into all of the bombers. That much is good. Um, we're only looking at a few of the upgrades. They, they gave us a lot of upgrades. They showed us a, quite a few, but I'm not doing all of them. But Cyan Re here as a crew. Now, the cool thing is, you know, over on the left, you can see that she's a crew, right? And there are some new upgrade types too. Like you have, you know, have Gunner, which is a kind of a crew, but it's a whole separate upgrade type. Um, but at the bottom, you have the requirements. So she can, she's only Imperial, and she can only go. Well, first off, she also needs the crew slot, but she can only go on a ship that has coordinate. So that's, you know, a great way to restrict what can go where. And I think that's a, an interesting way to potentially future-proof stuff. So she says, after you perform a coordinate action, uh, if the ship you coordinated performs a barrel roll or a boost, it may gain a stress to <laughs> rotate 90 degrees. So, you know, while that's a very, very powerful ability, she's so restrictive, there's only a handful of ships she can go on. So, and a lot of those ships, you know, you know, a, a, a crew ship with coordinate is probably going to be a good candidate for a lot of support characters, people like Palpatine and things like that. So there's going to be competition for those slots already. So that's kind of cool. Um, let's take a look at Vader. Vader was always one of those crews who just hurt himself and hurt you. Um, the interesting thing here is how a crew can also add a force to to the ship that it's on. So if they had no force, um, they're net, they now have one force. So they re you're going to regenerate one force token every turn, and you can use those force tokens to modify dice or to uh, you know to fuel whatever this ability is. And here is like if you don't have green tokens, then Vader's going to mess with you. So there's that. Um, and if you do already have a force pilot, so let's say if, you know, Starkiller ends up being a pilot and, and he's got his rogue sh shadow and he's he's got a force ability of two and you put Vader on the, as a crew, now you have force ability of three. All right? That just means you start off with three tokens and then you can cap out at three tokens, but you're not going to regenerate three every turn. Only one each turn. Palpatine. Palpatine was a big one. They, they changed Palpatine. It, this is kind of a nerf, but I think it's a little bit more balanced. And, and I did want to point out one thing to everybody who's not really happy about the, the, you know, the price of these conversion kits being 50 bucks. You're getting a $100 card for 50 bucks, right? <laughs> so you don't, have to, you don't have to buy a Raider to get Palpatine anymore. All right, of course, it's not worth $100 here, but he's still, he's, still, he's still good. So again, he's adding one force. When another friendly ship defends or performs an attack... You may spend a force to modify one of its dice as though uh, that ship had spent the force. So, 
again, you know, you're you're, you're going to be able to get a, a, a focus or a, or an evade, you know, however you want. And it also doesn't seem like it's restricted only once. The more force you have, uh, then the more you can do this. And it seems kind of balanced, and it's definitely restricted by those force tokens. You're not going to be able to just do this infinitely. So that's cool. Um, we have two generics here, and this is interesting because we got a force generic for the uh, for Inquisitor. And it's not the Inquisitor, it's Inquisitor. So the TIE Advanced uh, prototype, um, or they're just calling it now TIE Advanced V1. Uh, and, and again, you don't have to worry about titles, so I actually am okay with the TIE Advanced V1 now, just because of the fact that we don't have to, you know, and there's not going to be any more title drama, because all that stuff is going to be baked into the cards. I'm fine with that. But you do have a generic here that can get uh, Force Ability, so that's kind of cool as well. Um, and we got their dial there as well. But, but also, and it's hard to talk about the upgrades too much, but Baron of the Empire, they said would be a lot cheaper than, who's also another generic, would be cheaper than Inquisitor. But also at the same time, Baron would have access to the talent uh, slot, whereas Force, you'd either have Force or Talent. So either you have natural talent or you have Force. Um, I don't know if they've ever said that there'd be an instance where somebody might have both. It seems like at least right now it's very much one or the other. Um, but I imagine if you wanted super powered characters at some point, you could probably give them both. Um, but, you know, we'll see. I'm not trying to jump too far into the future. Let's go with what they have now. This is a really, really good one for the Empire. Um, our, our, your interceptors are done. <clears throat> now, even the generic interceptors have auto thrusters b baked into them, and auto thrusters is totally changed. But auto thrusters is like a built in push the limit. So now I can't wait to see how this will look in, in the squad builder once that comes out because I want to see what you can put on Suntir Fell. All right, like what can you give him? Because you won't have to give him push the limit anymore. So maybe there's defensive ones that you can make, you know, guarantee his survival. They also said, even though you can't see it here, that in the app, um, interceptors are going to have the built in title uh, that basically they can take two modifications. So that's part of built into the app. Another another thing that's you know good for tie interceptors. You don't have to have imperial aces. Like if you were just happen to not have that, or if you only had one copy of imperial aces and you wanted to run like four interceptors or something like you don't have to worry about those things anymore. So that much is nice. Um, I don't think they changed the dial too much on the interceptor. Uh, they did give him a Segnor's loop though, so the three Segnor's loop is good. Um, but yeah, but auto thrusters is the other thing that's really going to be good. So after you perform an action, you may perform a red boost or barrel roll action. So every everything can chain into uh, the booster barrel roll. You know, you'll get the stress, but again, stressing maneuverability. And, and, and even the generic was a pilot skill four, which was really high. So, you know, they have good, like good pilot skill. So, and, and of course that works hand in hand with maneuverability. So interceptors look like they will be able to compete. We'll see how well, you know, con considering there's no true turrets anymore. There's no true 360 arc. Well, until, you know, they need to shake up the meta some more. Uh, OGP, Omicron Group Pilot, uh, changed a little bit, a little bit here. So this is interesting. First off, it can't take target lock. Not a huge deal. It's not something you would always do, but it can't take it. Um, additionally, but they did give it a rear arc. Rear arc is very, very cool. Um, it kept the same dial, so it definitely is the worst dial in the game. But uh, if you find yourself chasing it, at least they can shoot out of the back now. So that much is good. It's not a turret, though, so they can't change it. The sides are always going to be the weak spot, but it can shoot out of the back. Uh, it's got reinforce to help it kind of stay alive. It's got coordinate and jam, so really good support ship. Um, but again, not maybe not the best combat-oriented ship, but a lot of little changes here. Um, I, I, I really like, I like the way these new bases are looking too. They look cleaner. It's just a shame you have to have a separate one for every single pilot. I don't know why they needed to put the name and the, and the, in the initiative on there. Like we could have just left it at one single pilot. Like, like why? Uh, that's, uh, I'll never, maybe someday I'll understand why. But yes. So, um, oh, well, so the type Punisher also got a fix. And I just want to point out also that the, one of the cool things here is that since these lines are on every single ship, uh, if you look at the base here, you can see like the center lines and stuff, every ship can potentially take a reinforce since it's going to be clear what's in front and behind. You know, every ship, you know, has all those quadrants marked off. So that's just standard now. So that allows them to do a lot more. And they were talking about that. 
Um, the uh, so the Punisher gets a zero stop, which is kind of cool. Um, the Punisher's got a whole bunch more actions, so a lot of cool little things built in to uh, to the Punisher. You know, you just reload, you know, boost in the target lock. You got a barrel roll. You know, a lot a lot of improvements here for the Punisher. Um, we got our Decimator. Decimator actually got buffed up a little bit. Um, you know, and I don't know if it really needed it, but uh, you know they wanted to. So I thought Decimators were in a decent enough spot, but but it's all right. It's it's okay. They're, I'm sure they adjust. They can. The thing is, they can just they have the cost. But so not only are Decimators, you know, they got the turret. It's it's the two sided turret, so they have a pretty good pretty good firing arc. They still got their focus and 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 and, and target lock, but they also have you know they they have uh, you know coordinate a red coordinate. But, um, gosh, reinforce. That's the word I'm looking for. They also have reinforce. So, again, not bad. Re reinforce seems pretty good for those big ships. And it's not as good as it used to be because if you only roll one damage, it's still going to get through. Um, or at least through with the reinforce. But, you know, you got zero agility. So, reinforce is helpful. You know, four damage is coming at you. At least it'll bring it down to three. So, that much is nice. Um, but, yeah, so, you know, decimators, not looking too shabby. Um, Oh boy! So let's see, decloaking, decloaking. All right, so let's look at our phantoms here. The phantoms are fun. Um, now the phantoms. The first thing I noticed was like, wow, they nerfed them down to only three attack. And yes, they did. One of the things they talked about is they said, well, three attack is still good because of the fact that defense isn't as crazy as it used to be. And, and that makes sense. Like, evades now don't add an evade result. They can just change one of your dice. Okay, got it. Um, you know, so... so the, But but I, with the changes to cloak, like, a cloak is going to, you know, let you... Like, when you decloak, you're going to now do that that move. Or you can spend it to start back. You know, you can spend your cloak token to decloak, do that move. Uh, and, you know, it's just the timing of it and... and, and you know, and they all have this Digium array. Um, so after, and only these guys have it. So if a you know a scum ship with a cloaking device does it, they're not going to have this. Uh, but after you decloak, you can perform an evade action. And at the start of the end phase, you may spend an evade action to gain a cloak token. So the idea here is that if you're able to decloak in a place that you don't get shot or don't get shot that bad, such that you can keep your evade token, you can automatically de you know, automatically recloak without having to spend an action for that. It's kind of like a combination of a couple of other things it's kind of like the advanced cloaking device but it doesn't require you to shoot it just requires you to dodge which i think is more thematic um and then the defenders uh, defenders got a little bit of a buff they they certainly did you've got a 2k turn red but then the 4k turn white is still there um you've got an extra shield so you're three 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 four uh you've got full throttle and uh, it's and you have to fully execute a speed three five manu three to five maneuver, and you can get the free evade action. Um, you've got you've got everything here. You got boost, barrel roll, target lock, evade, focus. Great, no linked actions, but they are pretty nice. And we also have Countess Raya. They showed her. They nerfed her a little bit because she you can just you have to increase the difficulty um, of the maneuver, but she's still pretty strong. I think she'll still be a power player for sure. All right, let's see. Um, they showed us the heavy laser cannons. They're still four damage, but you, they're bullseye arc only, which is interesting. This is, I think, the only cannon they showed was this one. Um, uh, the other interesting thing is the timing of this one. So it doesn't like you know, if you get a reroll, um, I think you're, you're not. You basically you're not getting any crits through. So that's that's interesting because um, there there was ways around. You know, if you did a you know you had to change your dice in, in one point right as soon as you rolled them. But then if you you could do other things and turn them back to crits, especially if you rerolled. Um, so they showed us a couple of things in scum. Some of this is uh, out of order because they sh they they were all over the place. First off, I mean, Kath Scarlet I think is going to be one of those superstars of scum at least at the beginning because they brought her her slave one the Marauder. Uh, and while you're attacking out of your rear arc, you may roll one additional attack die, and it adds a gunner slot. That one is pretty cool. They're showing us the Fang and uh, one of the uh, new uh, Slave One pilots. They also confirmed it is a new paint job on this particular on the new Slave One. So if you want to buy a new copy of the Slave One, you'll get the new paint job on it. Um, I don't. People were asking if the wings moved. I don't think the wings are going to move at all because I think they would have definitely talked about that. 
but yeah, you're getting three attack out of the front, three attack out of the rear um, on the on the uh, on the slave one. Not a whole lot of changes there, but but a little bit. Um, the, the dial is is pretty good though too. It, it's there, and it's a medium ship now too, so it's going to be. I think it's. I think the slave one is going to just be a great great scum ship. Also, want to point out the slave one is now scum only. So is the Skurg. So scum has like there's no more dual faction ships with the, I think the exception. No, no, there's still dual faction ships because I'm gonna say the Tie Fighter is still dual faction. You know, you've got Sabine's Tie, and then the Z95s and the Y Wings are still in the HWK. So wow, yeah. So there's okay. So never mind. There's a lot of dual faction ships, but um, but yes, some of the dual faction ships were pulled back. So no, you know, no more Captain Nim for the Rebels, and no more uh, Boba Fett over on the Empire. Okay, well, we'll be fine with that. Um, but yeah, you also have um, on on your Fang Fighter, you have. Uh, face-off ability so if you're right there you still get to add your your evade result kind of built into that um but not a whole lot of changes there uh new art for asajj ventress and this this one is is really nice so the cool thing here is they, all right they, well they first off i want to I, I wanted to talk about this one because they said there's not a whole lot of force users in scum and villainy so this is this one thing that makes Asajj also especially unique in that she's got you know she's got force of two which is pretty good, um, which is, seems appropriate, and uh, but she has two different she's got the mobile firing arc in single direction just pretty much like she is normally but she's also got that frontal arc, so whereas a lot of the turreted primary weapon turret ships uh, that's their primary so you you know once you turn the turret you won't have the front shot anymore she'll always have the front shot plus the turret. But the good thing is the turret's now weaker. It's only a two attack for that turret. And that seems appropriate because she's got bigger guns in the front, right? And then, uh, and, and so a smaller turret. So that's, that much is good. Um, and she can now spend force points to do uh, what she's doing. And, you know, you know give somebody, uh, they gain a stress token unless they remove a green token. So, you know, if, you, if she catches you slipping, uh, but this wasn't really about her. It's more about the stats, you know, and how they're doing these. So the Lancers are, are going to be nice and not too OP. I kind of like, you know, rewarding you more for lining up a front shot. I like that. Um, so uh, there was also some concern that a lot of characters were not going to be in 2nd Edition anymore. Or they were going to be replaced. Um, I was happy to see Paylob still made it. And they're like, oh, I think all of the HWK scum pilots still made it back in. Um, here, here we have the HWK dial. I think I was talking about it earlier with Jan. Now they got a zero, you know, it's a pretty good dial now. It's, it's not, but I still don't have a K turn or a turnaround, but, but I like the zero stop. That much is cool. Uh, let's see. Um, this is kind of cool. So we were talking about docking. Docking is more streamlined now. Every, docking kind of works the same for everybody, but the Nash to Pup was like the first one, right? And, and, and so they made the Nash to Pup into a special ship that, it itself is an escape craft only, and so this one can only be used uh, to to escape a blowing up ship, and then you gain the houndstooth pilot, and just kind of like just like the Nash the Pup always was. But the important thing here is that you can dock with the houndstooth title. You don't have to put the Nash the Pup in it. You can put any Z ninety five in there, even one of the you know the aces. Well, it's not you know or like Nadru or something like that. You can put one of the new Z ninety five. You can put any Z ninety five in there, and then dock them normally. The difference is the Nash to Pup is going to be cheap, whereas the normal, I mean, Z95s are already cheap, but the Nash to Pup, I think, is going to be significantly cheaper. They didn't talk about price points, because I think a lot of that's still probably being ironed out. But if we were going to compare it to today, um, I think the Nash to Pup would be like probably like six points or something like that compared to, uh, you know, whatever, whatever a, you know, whatever a regular Z95 would cost since you're not really able to use it until this ship gets blown up so if you were a fan of the imperial version of boba fett fear not because his legacy lives in the slave one title first off you do still get that torpedo slot it's there at the very bottom but you also have boba fett's ability attached to the slave one title which is kind of cool the funny thing to me is that this says scum fire spray class patrol craft so if the fire spray is only existing in scum why do they have to limit the title to scum because uh not all titles are restricted by faction for example the uh, the hwk title uh is is dual faction you can use it on either either faction but this one i'm, curious, I'm just curious why this one's restricted to scum um 
and 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 I'm gonna I'm just going out there. A lot of people have been speculating that they're gonna do Clone Wars factions. I think it's more and more likely now because that like because there's gonna be a fire spray in the Clone Wars if they do that because you got Jango Fett, and if you're gonna do Jango Fett, you know then maybe for balance purposes you wanted to keep this one in the Galactic Civil War so you wanted to keep this on scum and maybe Jango Fett will work for uh, you know the CIS and then there's the new scum uh, fire spray dial so yes uh, they got the three talon on there and then and as a medium based ship you know it's pretty good dial like, that's going to be a, a it's going to be a really good ship you don't want to run multiples of these guys um so also let's talk about some of the other bounty hunters especially you're probably concerned about jump masters so let's talk about the jump masters jump masters are getting um you know they're getting some of their stuff back they're getting torpedoes back um and they're getting um they're getting a crew slot but they're not getting the astromech but with punishing one you can add the astromech uh and they're not it looks like salvaged astromechs are gone and they're not a thing anymore they're just you know, since they're redoing the game, they can just pick and choose which astromechs they want to allow for which factions. It totally makes sense, especially if they're going to do Clone Wars. Especially if they're going to do Clone Wars, because there's astromechs in Clone Wars. So astromechs now need pretty much all need to be restricted by faction, and that's fine. Make everything restricted by faction. I don't care. It's fine. Totally fine. Um, Mist Hunter. Mist Hunter is uh, no longer going to you know only give you the one cannon it, you can do and now add any cannon you want hopefully that will help it right um so let's also take a look at the contracted scout here um not a whole lot of change they still get the asymmetrical dial um you've got you know instead of a primary weapon turret of two now that's just that that one um it's still a turret but it's this the unidirectional turret so you know again you're not gonna be able to shoot anywhere you want so you're gonna have you know much less visibility um, so that's kind of a nerf you know you have to, it's going to require you to fly it better um but you do have linked actions here you can barrel roll which is red uh and you can you know you can link um, your focus or target lock into adjusting uh, your mobile firing arc so it's okay it's okay you're not gonna you know you're still gonna have your torpedo uh, you can't see it on here but they said you it, it would still have the torpedo slot we don't know what it's going to cost but again, if this becomes too strong, then they can always increase the cost or, or even remove the torpedo upgrade, by which they said they, they weren't planning to do that. So let's talk about our G1A Starfighter. So uh, this was one of those ships that was, I think it was kind of dead before it even landed. Like I flew this once and I was like, oh, it's just not very good. And, and it, this one never caught on. And, and later in the lifespan of X-Wing 1.0, or at least in, I guess in the second half of X-Wing 1.0, this was one of the only ships that like came out and was never really prominent, even when it was new. So uh, they do gain the zero stop here. We've seen a lot more ships get that zero stop, which is which is fine. Um, and it's got jam as well, so it's gained it's gained a few new tricks. Um, hopefully, hopefully it will be enough to make it competitive again. Now three attack is better than three attack used to be. Uh, so I think that's I think that's got that shows promise, and I think they said they reduced the point cost on it a little bit as well. Um, oh, let's look at let's look at Guri and Zizor. So uh, they went with us. They showed us some of the Star Vipers, and uh, here's a great example of how a droid pilot and a, and a humanoid pilot in the exact same ship have different uh, stuff. So Guri has you know the calculate, and Zizor has a focus, which is cool. Um, also, I want to point out that all of the Star Vipers now um, have that built-in, um, you know, that that built-in automatic, you know, where the barrel rolls must be curved. So they're all going to get the slanky uh, barrel rolls, which is cool. And oh, in addition to that, you can barrel roll into focus or into calculate if you're Guri. Um, and she can, but Guri can still gain a focus because she keeps her old pilot ability. So that's all that is pretty cool. Um, you know, you're you're getting a, still getting a great dial. On this thing, you're getting the one, you're one forwards, you know, lots of lots of blue. Again, if you're brand new to X-wing 2.0, they're changing out green maneuvers for blue maneuvers, simply for the colorblind folks. It's a little easier for uh, other people to read, like just a cosmetic change. Uh, but that'll take some some getting used to, just guess for referring to them as blue maneuvers. Um, let's see. All right, so now we've got our 
a quad jumper, which is now officially called a quad jet transfer space tug. Um, you know, you've got, you still got your one, you know, your one reverse. You got a two reverse and a two S loop. Um, you, you, it can evade, which is a red action. It still got the barrel roll. And they, they, they're all coming with a baked in space tug tractor array action. And it says you can choose a ship in your forward target, and a forward arc at range one. And the ship gains a tractor token or two tractor tokens if it's in your uh, bullseye arc at range one. Again, and, and the tractor tokens are so you can um, so you can you know move on one of those ships and also reduce their agility by one. But not only is the tractor token important, but it's also important to know how they work. Right? You need one to tractor a small ship, two for a medium ship, and three for a large ship. So it's not so easy for this guy to to, to tractor a large ship without some help. Uh, and and they kind of go away at the end of turn, as well. And uh, oh, I guess that's everything. Going back to Sabine. So, just a quick rundown of some of the some of the changes. There was a lot more than that. I didn't cover everything. Um, I didn't. Uh, I don't think I have the havoc. The havoc wasn't changed all that much, other than the fact that you're really only getting it in Scum now, so you're not going to have that in uh, in the new stuff anymore. So. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Uh, there is still another round of the giveaway going on right now, so if you'd like to win a $20 Cool Stuff gift card for an expansion of your choice, all you got to do is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. I want to thank you guys all so much for watching. If you want to see the whole thing, I, you can also check out my stream for the entire um, the entire thing, and I will be at Gen Con picking these up when they launch, and so I will be able to bring you the full shebang Although, gosh, there's so much in here. It will probably, an unboxing will only take like like six hours per thing. So that might be something we have to break them down over multiple videos. <laughs> All right, well, I, I, if you had any doubts on, you know, you're getting a whole lot of stuff for your money, I think there's no question you're getting a, t a whole lot of stuff for your money. So it's going to be really cool. I want to thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day.